hit the club and dance like a stripper. Ain't got a nigga, I'm thrown on that liquor. I'm about to hit the club and dance like a stripper. It's about to get real juicy. What's up, babes? It's Oreo, and this is episode two of Let's Talk About with Oreo. And this episode, we're gonna talk about the naked truth. Now, I apologize for the long wait. I have been dealing with so much, trying to get a new car, working on an all-female mix for you guys. All kinds of stuff, so I'm so sorry that I'm running so behind on episode 2. I'm going to try to keep up with my episodes at least every two weeks. Um, if I can't, I mean again, I'm not going to give up on this, ep on this show. It just may take me a little bit longer to complete. Bear with me. It will not be like this forever. Now, these are the pros and cons of the nightlife, the strip club world, the naked truth. Now, my number one pro, and I'm pretty sure everyone would know this, of course, is it's fast money. You know, you can, let's say you have a, a, an important bill that's due later on in the week. You can probably hope, depending on your hustle, you can probably hope to make that within the next few days. Another one is... You get to meet important people. Um, you know, you'll never know who you may come across. And sometimes it's not always good to meet them in that predicament. But, you know, for most, it's a win-win situation. You can make up your own schedule. Now, for the people that are terrible with being on someone else's time, then this is one pro that most people really, really like I enjoy because I hate being on someone else's schedule. And I like being my own boss. And that's just something that I just, ever since I was young, I've just always been that way. I cannot stand having to be someone else's slave. I can't. You gain a lot of self-confidence because, you know, you have to keep yourself you, you know, together in order to get the clientele that you need and want. You got to make sure you look good. If you look good, you feel good, you make good money. My very last pro, I may have left some out, but these are like my top five or whatever. It is excellent exercise. And what I, what I mean by that is, of course, dancers whoever were walking around in six, seven inch heels, shaking asses or doing whatever for however many hours straight. When you think about it, you're burning a lot of calories doing that. At the same time though, I can say that strip club food can be a killer. The calories you burn it was just a, a, a opening space. Strip clubs do have very good food. Now moving on to the cons. Um, working in the strip club, it can be a hit or miss. If you spend fifty to a hundred dollars on tip out and you don't make close or you know whatever to add up to what you pay to work, then it's like you know. You basically just work for free. Favoritism. Favoritism is a major, 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 major problem. And sometimes it's not a problem to the ones that get the favorites show show to them. But mainly it goes to the girls with that has you know a certain amount of followers or that has a certain type of body or look or a certain relationship with someone that is important in the club or, or plugged in somehow with the club or a, a money spender in the club. It's all kind of favoritisms that, that get shown. Um, DJ favoritism, all types of shit. Fight, argument, um, disagreement, or you know, some kind of altercation that happens that causes some kind of little mini or big type of commotion. It always happens. You know, you're dealing with different drunk people and 
different emotions and all types of drugs and shit mixed in like you'll never know what to expect but rejection from customers that is a all-time big ass con because and I, and I know almost every dancer can relate like no one likes rejection I mean of course we have to deal with it but when when you're in a strip club and especially when you're desperate and then there's no other money left and that one section you finally come in and see they have a little something to spend and they don't want you that shit hurts I don't care what anyone say. That shit hurts, especially when you're you're not making no money, and there's no one there, no one else there but them, and they're sitting there with money, or at least look like they're they're about to spend some, and and they don't want you. Y'all already get the point. Insecurities, insecurities can become a big ass problem because again you're dealing with all different kinds of competition and people like what they like and being in the strip club it can bring a lot of insecurities because you just never know like so sometimes you're like damn am I, is my butt not big enough is my body not not slim enough you know it, it's all kind of shit I hate when there are, you know, there's a, a section that comes in, you know, they, they either got their money or they're, they're preparing to. And I just hate when there have already been three or four girls in the section, but more and more girls tend to come and try and get in the customer's ear and try and, you know, butter them up and take the attention off of the ones that's been standing there you know, waiting to make that money as well. Like, that shit is just unfair. The strip club world is so damn unfair. It's so fucked up. But it's like, you can't do nothing about it because it's like, in the strip club world, it's like every man for himself. Every woman for themselves. It's, it's crazy. Alright y'all, so this part of the episode is called Stripper Talk. And this is the part when I talk my shit, so let's talk about it. One thing is, I don't care what anyone says, every man's fantasy is to screw a dancer. Regardless of who it is, married, in a relationship or not, every man has a fantasy of screwing or messing around with a dancer. And that's just my opinion, but I think it's a fact. <laughs> Most men think just because you're a dancer that you're willing or accepting to doing whatever they want you to do. They expect you to be down to just sleep with them or do, you know, whatever they want in return for whatever the hell they offer. Which some dancers accept it, some dancers don't. And I mean, just the ones that do, I just hope that you're not being stupid. Your stripper personality is completely different from your regular personality. Strippers' personalities are supposed to be more fun, flirtatious, you know, to make someone feel good, male or female. But being a stripper, you can't go in there with an attitude and frown on your face and being aggressive to people and expect to get what you want. You have to be confident and flirty regardless of your relationship status. If you're in a relationship, that is all left outside of the door when you step into the strip club. Because, I mean, when you're meeting the strip club, it's kind of like a fantasy, a dream. Something that you don't just witness in your everyday life. That's why it's called the nightlife. The nightlife is completely different from the regular world. One main thing a lot of people should know is that the dancers come to make a living expense, not have fun. So pay the dancer. Pay the dancer. These girls have to pay over Three, between 300 to 800 dollars to get their hair done, let alone makeup, nails, outfits, shoes, tip out, I can, the list goes on. Dancers 
spend so much money just to make themselves look and feel good for you guys. So yes, pay the dancer. Now in my opinion, tip outs can make or break you. Because you have some clubs, they don't, you know, they don't charge high tip outs, especially during a certain time. If you come early, the tip outs are known to be a little lower. If you come later, they're pretty high. So let's just say you pay $80 to work that night, but you end up making maybe $200. At the end, it's like, yay, I made, you know, I made a little something. I made more than what I spent to work. But you gotta think about everything else. You gotta pay everyone else after that. So one thing I hate about walking the floor is the feeling of having to troll customers to make your money like at the end of the day I feel like we should not have to walk around the floor and beg for what we're there for some customers want you to work want you to freaking slave for for that money and sometimes they don't even be that much money and it's like I'm just the type of person I hate begging and I feel like I'm walking around begging people and that's just Something I really don't like, but that's a part of the hustle. So, one big pet peeve to me is it's like either you like me or you don't. Don't waste my time the whole night if I'm not the person you're looking to spend your money on. At the end of the day, you know what to do when you come to the strip club, and if you don't like the person that's in your in your space or whatever, you pay to come in there. You have the right to tell that person, hey, I'm good. Hey, I'm not ready. Hey, I'm not interested. I'm sorry. Any of that. But don't sit there with your head pasted into your phone or, or being cool, but you really know you're not about to spend a dime on a dancer. Like, do not waste our time because we, we come there to work. We come there to make money. We don't come there to just mingle and, and see who likes us and who doesn't. That's what speed dating is for. Ladies, if he sits on the phone the whole time you're right there, just... Big chance is he's not interested. And you just keep it moving. On to the next customer. It's all about the hustle, baby. And she got a bad look click, and they all wanna play. And hey, you know we having the shit. Got the team on the way. Sell a work on that pole. Blow a bag in her face. Yeah, that little bitty booty be moving. That little bitty booty be moving. That little bitty booty be moving. Let's get into the different kind of customers that come into the strip club. Number one. You have the married man. Now the married man is known to spend about sixty to two hundred dollars in the club. They're they have a family and wife at home. They try not to spend too much on you just because they know they have responsibilities at home. Number two, you have the sugar daddy. Now the sugar daddy is what, of course, most women in this world look for. Um, they're usually rich and high in income. Of course, um, they really want more than just your attention in the club, which is a problem. Most sugar daddies, they they want to meet up with you and, and want all your time outside of the club as well. Number three, you have the loner. The loner spends about twenty to eighty dollars in the club. Um, they're a lot quiet in the club. They kind of sit off in the back or you know somewhere where they're not really in the mix in the club and they come they come looking for something in particular sometimes they have a certain fetish or a certain type of thing they're looking for um, they are likely to gain an obsession with you just because they are loners and you know you're a, a beautiful woman you know, entertaining them and fulfilling their fantasy so they become a little obsessed. You know, like on Players Club when Don had that man I was following her um, home from the club. Yeah, that was the type of man you need to look out for. <laughs> 
And then number four, you have the party goers. The party goers are there's some there's sometimes a little a little younger group. Mainly like birthday parties, bachelor parties, or just people that like to go out and turn up and you know show out, fuck up the club every now and then. Um, they may come as a party or just a group of guys looking for fun. They tend to look at the girls as their toys. They come, they're all drunk and turned up, and theme, you know, they're smacking their asses all hard, doing all kind of obnoxious shit. But that's, of course, that's why they're called the party goers. They t come, turn the damn club up. Number five. I'm pretty sure every club has it, is the drug dealer. Now the drug dealer spends maybe, now I'm not going to say zero dollars because of course I'm pretty sure they get charged to get in the club or pay to park. They got to pay some kind of money now. If they want to blend in, they may buy them a drink or so, they may buy one little dance from from just any dancer, most likely that they know or new to the club, don't really know who they are. Um, number six, the looking for love man. Now, there's a lot of these men that come surprisingly to the club. It can be all ages, all in any income. Their belief and hope is to find them a woman in the club and make them their woman, their wife, whatever, and live happily ever after. But shit seems to not always happen like that. Um, in reality, the girl has no intentions on being in any kind of relationship with the guy. They are just trying to just, you know, keep a good relationship with them to a certain extent so they can continue to kind of get what they want out of the men. As well, and I'm sorry to say that, but that's the truth. Number seven, the looking for sex man. Now, this I had to make this the last and final one because this is the one I hate. Now, every club, I don't care, every club has this man or multiple men that come and look specifically for a piece of ass. Now, <sighs> these men, oh, I cannot stand. They're only at the club for one thing and one thing only. They're looking for a girl that is willing to come home with them, meet them outside of the club, and they're gonna, of course, offer them money for sex. Um, he comes in, he gets different dances from a number of dancers until he decides which one he will, until he not decide because it, it, it's more of a dancer's decision. But he gets dancers from multiple girls until he finds the one that is willing to come and give him what he wants. Now remember, the looking for sex man is only in the club for looking for one thing, and that's to get his dick wet for a cheap price. <gasps> and that's how it normally goes. Now, I know some people like to judge dancers, and you know, they think because they're doing something that is considered inappropriate in the real world you know people take that and and run with it as oh she's a hoe or oh she a gold digger or whatever the case may be but sometimes y'all have to understand not all dancers are in it just to be in the game because they want to be hoes and shake their ass for money no, a lot of us women are doing it because we are, you know, trying to find a quicker way to invest in ourselves. And believe it or not, a lot of dancers have invested in themselves and and started up their own businesses, um, did all kind of things to, you know, get themselves out of this strip club world or at least closer to it so I think that dancers should not be just fully judged off of oh I see you're in a strip club 
But one thing I can say is these strip clubs need to get it together because it's starting to turn into more of a nightclub than an actual strip club nowadays in some of these clubs. Like most people are coming in just to come hang out and chill and just find something else to do in their night. But no, a strip club is a strip club for a reason. And you're coming to spend some motherfucking money. We on that dumb shit and fuck Donald Trump, bitch. That NBA shit. Hoes, I don't play with. I hate all that fake shit. Stunning on my ex, bitch. I know she can't stand it. Burn her on my waist, bitch. I be in your neck, bang shit. Fuck up by my face, bitch. I be in your neck, gang shit. Get shot in your face, bitch. Reaching for my chain, bitch. Made it out them chains, bitch. I never change, bitch. Still keep that thing, bitch. Catch me trying to drill some shit. I want to thank y'all so much much for tuning in to episode two of let's talk about with oreo i again want to apologize for the amount of time it took me to finally post this video um i want to make sure that everything i do and put out is perfect or at least close to perfect and entertaining um so i hope you guys understand other than that stay tuned for episode three each episode is going to get even more lit, even more crazier, even more entertaining. This week, um, I kind of had to rush it a little bit just to put it out there, but do not underestimate the kid. Bye, babes. Yeah. Hold your draws. Hey, babe. So this part of my episode is called Stripper Talk. Dream up. Okay. Her little setup. She has her little wardrobe wrap where you can pick up. I know a lot of you may be wondering, you know, what happens inside of the strip club? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So I know some of you. Look how she moving for pony. Yeah,